It started with the left rear door refusing to open. The window cracks open so it knows I'm pulling the handle, but it won't unlatch the door. Then, oddly, I noticed if you open the front door at a certain angle, the back door works again. So I'm thinking there's something wrong inside the front door's wire harness, and most likely it's right here where it bends. Before I start disconnecting wires, I want to power down the car. You go to safety and touch power off and power off again. You need to remove the speaker to access the wire harness. Pry out the rubber pad inside the door pull. I'm using a hooked pick. Then pry off the plastic cover behind the door handle. The bolt inside the door pull takes a 9mm socket. The two screws behind the door handle are Torx T30. They might actually be T35, but T30 works. And the rest are all snap fasteners. Then you disconnect the cable for the door handle and all the wire connectors. It helps to have something to poke the release tabs and pry the connectors apart. Oddly, the speaker screws are quarter inch. Six millimeters is too small and seven is too big. Here you're gonna have to remove the kick panel. The rocker panel is one piece with the kick panel, so you have to remove the whole thing. door push the rubber boot out and then you can push it back inside the door to pull the harness out the speaker hole. All the connectors to that harness inside the car are right inside this hole except for one. You have to remove the dash in cover and disconnect that connector. There's some wire harnesses and a large connector attached here with clips. Unclip them all to give the wiring some slack. You don't need to disconnect the large connector. Then you can pull all the connectors out of the hole. This is the small connector behind the dash end cap. Pull it out to make room for the other connectors to come out. To disconnect this one, you pry up on the tab. Undo this clip so you can pull the harness into the door and out the speaker hole. It's easier to just yank it out instead of trying to pry it. And now I can pull the harness out the speaker hole to give me some room to work. So here's where I'm going to save you a crap ton of time. The problem is in here, nowhere else. At first, I was going to be thorough and check every wire end to end. I used a toner to find the wire ends and continuity tester to check for broken wires. But to get to some of the wire ends, I had to remove this cover, the door latch, the window regulator. I wasted like two or three hours before I decided just to go straight to the suspected problem area. You need to be able to slide the boot away from the trouble area. It's held in place with electrical tape. On the other end, you need to be able to crack open the split loom. It's also secured with electrical tape, and the wires inside are wrapped with more electrical tape. Now you can slide the boot away. You want to give yourself a lot of room to work. I'm still using a continuity tester here, but instead of going end to end, I've got this wire piercing probe so I can tap in just after the suspected break. And this is where I discovered I can actually feel the break in the wire. It's easy to bend right where the break is. From here on I didn't use the tester again because it was going to be pretty easy to find the breaks. I'm bending the wire with my fingers as I run down every wire and feeling for breaks. 
and I discovered the broken wires will pull right apart because with the copper strands broken the plastic insulator pretty much easily pulls apart. So I found four broken wires and this would explain some of the other problems I was having besides the rear door thing like I was getting notifications that windows were left open and sometimes the door handles wouldn't pop out until I touched the key fob to the door. So the thing I noticed about all the broken wires was they're shorter than the surrounding wires. And that tells me they probably weren't breaking from the bending, but there's some pulling force. Like they're breaking because there's too much tension on them. When the door's at certain angles, it pulls the broken ends apart. And at other angles, the tension's relieved and the ends touch and make contact again. So to fix this, I'm going to add a little length to the broken wires. What I'll also do is not secure the boot to the wires so they're able to move freely and find a happy place where they're not being stretched. Then that first clip that held the harness inside the door, I'm going to leave that loose because I think that was contributing to the pulling. The harness is still secure and it won't snag the window because there's another clip just three or four inches away. I'm soldering all the connections and insulating with shrink tubing. This will help keep everything nice and tight because it all needs to fit inside this skinny rubber boot. When soldering wires together, I find it's not necessary to twist the wires together. If you're using a mechanical connector like a crimp cap, twisting does make it stronger, but when soldering small wires like this, just overlapping two wires and soldering them together is plenty strong. As a matter of fact, if you try to pull them apart, you'll find the joint is stronger than the rest of the wire. I'm just stripping back like a quarter inch. First I apply solder to the wire ends. Don't forget to slide on the shrink tubing before you solder the wires together. I use marine shrink tubing because it has a glue inside that makes the seal water tight. With solder already on the ends, you don't need a third hand to add solder. Just hold the ends together and melt the solder. And now we have a nice skinny connection. It's been like two weeks since I did the harness repair and none of the problems have come back. I hope this video has helped you a bit. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe.